Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another layer by layer tutorial. In today's tutorial, we're gonna take a look at making a unicorn horn in Fusion 360. Let's jump right into it. Here it is, this is it 3D printed, and I just wanted to kind of show you guys uh, a demo of it real quick. So it is completely shelled out, and this is all done in Fusion 360. It's parametric, so if we ever wanted to change the values, it's really easy to do so. So you got a nice uh, tip there, and we have nice shelling as well. If you look really carefully, there's actually a threading right here. So instead of having sew tabs built into the horn itself, well, we made an external little piece here. This has uh, a NeoPixel jewel, it has seven NeoPixel LEDs in it. That's got some wiring coming in the background. And then this is plugged into a feather and a, um, hol well, not Halloween, a uh, prop maker feather wing. So the cool thing about this is that it does have the thread and this piece also has the thread. It's got the NeoPixel jewel. It's got some standoffs for uh, mounting and uh, yeah, mounting and securing that uh, NeoPixel jewel. You got a nice hole at the bottom here for the wire to come out. This is connected via uh, JST, so it's really easy to disconnect this. I can just pop that back in like that. And so what you can do is you can screw this on here like that. It has like two resolution uh, revolutions, I think. So now you have this really easy to swap out bottom here. So let's say you wanted a different LED or maybe you want uh, something um, else, you can uh, make a different piece for it. So that's really cool. So let's go ahead and plug this in and see what the lighting looks like when I light it up. You, you can play around with different light sources, of course. Um, this one, you can see here, it doesn't fully illuminate the tip here. Um, that's just because of the shape of it. So if you wanted to use like a NeoPixel stick, you could probably do that. Or you could fill this in with uh, some uh, some like cotton and then that would uh, that would diffuse the lighting a little bit better. Uh, so it's up to you, but uh, this, is what we're, this is the shape that we're gonna make. And uh, I've done this before, of course, like maybe three or four different times, but I've never quite made it this twisty and this, uh, this elegant, I think. So that's what we're gonna work on today. It's really easy to take it out as well. So if you want to uh, swap out unicorn horns, uh, I think having a built-in coil like that really is kind of nice. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and take a look at the model itself. All right, so here it is. And I really want to kind of take a look at that tip there. Now, when I first made the shape like this uh, a couple of years ago, I did this in Autodesk Maya, which is a polygon editor. Uh, it's not parametric. This is solid modeling, so it is parametric. When I select that top ring there, uh, it'll give you an exact radius. So that's 3.5, which makes it a six millimeter diameter. So you can change this completely. And as you kind of rotate around it, you can see how these two kind of twisty uh, pieces are wrapping around this sort of cylinder here. And they just smoothly kind of transition between them. Now, as we go down here, you can see that taper is maintaining um, the shape really nice. And then at the bottom here, it has this extra nice um, surface here that's tapered and it's kind of blending into those two circles that are twisting into each other. And then as you go down here, you can see that this is the, the purple piece is the, uh, the actual piece that holds the NeoPixel jewel. So if I do a cross-section analysis, you get a good look at the inside of it, perfect shell. And you can see the threading in there has uh, some nice tolerances. And that's really it. That looks really nice though, in terms of a, of a shell and a, uh, and a nice uh, twisty looking unicorn horn. So that is the piece. So that's what we're gonna work on. So let's go ahead and uh, make a new document. I'll start by making a new component. Let's call this the horn. Okay, so I'm gonna start with a, a sketch and we're gonna draw right on this profile here or on this surface, on this plane. <laughs> and then we'll come in here. So the first thing I wanna do is create some user parameters because we want it to be parametric, right? Well, the first thing I wanna do is probably put shell, um, which is gonna be our shell thickness. I'll make another one, I'll call this um, circle. This is gonna be like our individual circles, let's put 23. And then I also want a diameter, kind of the horn diameter to be a certain thing. I think it was like 40, I'll hit okay. Okay, cool. And one last one, it's do height. How, high do, how tall do you want your unicorn horn to be? I think uh, 140 was it? And I'll hit okay. Okay, cool. So the first thing is to make some circles. So I'll bring up my circle tool. And really the shape for the unicorn horn, it's just two circles that are twisting into each other. So let's make those two circles. I want it to be on this, uh, this line here, which is our X axis, I believe. So I'll make this and I'll type in circle, which is our circle. I'll make another one over here and same thing, circle. Okay. So now that I have those two circles, I want them to be, um, parametrically constrained. Um, so what I'll do is I'll make a line, a construction line, and I will connect this to the center origin of this grid. 
And to make it straight, I will apply a horizontal constraint. Cool. And then I will apply a dimension to that. Let's say we want it to be 10, or actually four. Yeah, I think four and a half maybe might be better, four and a half. And then I'll select that that line and actually make it a construction line by hitting the X key or clicking on that right there where it says construct. And then I'm gonna do the same thing uh, for this other circle. So from over here to the center origin and let's apply that 4.5 and then we'll create an X there. So now we have our three circles. You see how they, uh, well, two circles that make kind of a third one in the middle. You can see how it creates that right there. That's really the shape that makes our, our unicorn horn. Just those two circles that are um, kind of mashing into each other. So I hit OK. The next thing we want to do is, is create a line that will reference how tall we want the horn to be. So looking at it on the front view, I'll create a new sketch, draw it right there. And we'll just zoom out a little bit. And I want to start from the center again. So from the very center, click on that. And then we'll go up a bit. And then I will close that. Now I can apply that height dimension or that height parameter to the dimension. So I'll create a new dimension there and then just say height. And that's that. Excellent. Now I hit stop sketch. All right. So now we have our cool. <laughs> is it really that cool? We'll have our, we'll have our two sketches. And what we need to do next is to create something that will kind of be a spiral. What we need something to tell our, our, um, our circles to spiral in turn. So the best tool to do that is a actual coil. So that's what we'll do. We'll roll up the coil tool and we'll just draw on the floor plane like this. And then I'll start in the center of our origin and then bring it out here. Watch, there's something interesting I'll note. It's a behavioral thing. So let's type in uh, the horn diameter. You'll see that it, it locks it in there, right? Now when I click, it actually makes the coil, but now look at our parameter. You'll see the diameter has now switched to just the value of 40. It's something to do with Fusion not remembering that I actually put a user parameter. So let's go ahead and put that back in there. So all we gotta do is say horn diameter, and that will actually append it there, okay. Now we want to uh, change this probably, actually the type, just make sure it's revolution and height. That's what we want. For our height, well, we do have a height parameter, so let's put that in, so height, there we go. And it's going to the full fit. Now for the revolutions, I actually do want it at three. And for the section um, shape, internal triangular is what we want. We want the section position to be on the inside. So we'll change it to the inside. And in the section size, I'm going to change this just to three. It doesn't kind of matter, but I'll, I'll leave it at three. Now, the next thing that we want to do is you'll see that this does a nice spiral and that is really cool looking, but we need to somehow bring this top area inwards closer. We need to make it tapered. The angle option is what you want to play with. So right here, I can put negative seven and that'll bring it inward. Um, hmm. You see it deleted it. So it is a negative value, negative four. Ah, I see here. We want this to be on the outside. So you can see here, this line here is what we're going to use as a reference point, as a guide rail to create our feature. So now that that is uh, set to the outside, I think I can bring this back to seven. And that is looking a lot better. It's really close. We can't quite get it to the center here, but that's okay. A, a little bit of, a, of an angle goes a very long way. So we have revolutions three, which is what I want. And that's pretty much the base that we want our tool to be. So with that operation set to new body, I'll hit okay. And that's that's our, our coil here. So now this is where it's gonna get, this is where all of these things are gonna come together to make our unicorn horn. So let's go ahead and bring up the magic feature. What is it? It's a sweep. All right, so let's click on sweep. And for the type, normally you have a single path. Well, if you drop this down, you can have some other options. The one we want is path plus guide rail. Okay, so the first thing we wanna select is our profile, which is gonna be these three kind of circle entities. Our second one is our path. Our path is the straight line going up. That's where we want it to go. And then our guide rail, this is the magic. You guys ready? We're gonna select this little line here that's a part of the uh, the coil. Click on that, and right away, we get our unicorn horn. Look at this, this is amazing. Now our, our distance is set to one, which is 100%, so it's kind of going along the length of that whole line. I actually wanna change it to 95%, so 0.95 is what we wanna have. 
And that is because I actually don't want this right here. I actually want to create a blend between this shape and a nice cylinder. As you saw our tip in the demo, it looked really nice. I want that tip here, so that's why I brought it down to 0.95. So if you want to play around with that distance, you can totally change that. Uh, the extends and the uh, the pr profile scaling are set to default. Um, for this particular shape, it doesn't really need those modified. So operation new body, I'll hit OK. So now when we bring down our bodies, you can see we have two of them. We have our unicorn horn and our tool. We don't need our tool anymore, so I can just hide that. And there is our lovely unicorn horn. We're not done yet. So one thing is uh, I don't like the pro the, the metallic shape, the uh, metallic prof uh, profile, I don't know what it's called, material. So I'll hit the A key to bring up the appearance. And I got here a set of plastic um, materials. I'll drop in this white one. You can right click, edit, and then change the color if you want. I want it nice and white. And I'll turn down the, the depth of transparency down all the way to zero. And I'll hit OK. And that is what I want. Cool. So now what I want to work on is creating that tip. We really want to create that tip there and smooth it out. So what I'll do is um, I actually want to offset this plane a little bit, let's say one millimeter, and then I can draw on this plane and create a circle. This circle, let's make it six millimeters in diameter. If we looked at it from the top down, you see that it just barely uh, covers those two circle entities. And that looks really cool, by the way. Look at that cool shape. So I'll hit uh, stop sketch because that's all we need from there. And then what I need to do is to blend these two surfaces together. Well, they're surfaces kind of. So I'll bring up my loft tool and a loft between those two. There are some features here that you could do um, like to make it tangent, but I really don't need to. Uh, I just need to create that, uh, that, uh, that blend there. And I'll leave all these okay, all these default operation tip to join, hit okay. All right, so now that I have this circle, it's a perfect kind of radius because I set it to six. Now I can grab that surf and extrude it out. I'm going to bring this out to, I believe, 4.5 or so. It's parametric, so we can change it. But 4.5 looks good. I'll hit OK. And now what I can do is I can smooth this out with a fillet. So I will fillet this completely as much as I can, up to three, and then hit OK. Now, it doesn't look quite as um, smooth. It kind of looks like it's kind of coming out a little bit. So watch what happens when I select these two. Uh, surfaces here that I kind of don't really like that much. Now watch what happens when I hit the delete key. Fusion's going to heal that and kind of rework the uh, the geometry a bit. So if we look at it, come on. Sometimes my uh, visual style likes to take a minute to load. There we go. There's our edges that we want. So you can see here that these two now are now blending smoothly into this. And this cylinder, if I click on it, it gives me the radius of six. So you have complete control over that. And if maybe that was too tall, here's something cool. If you hit the M key for move and change the move object to faces, well, now you can select this face and actually drag it down or drag it up. That's really neat. You get a little warning here because it's just telling, hey, some additional faces have moved. Well, yeah. And then now you can kind of move it down if you want. But that delete really helped out kind of to smooth that piece out there. I don't know another way to create that other than deleting that face. So that's just kind of something that uh, that is there. Sweet. So now that we have this, it's a complete solid. If I go to inspect section analysis and then click on one of these guys, you see here that it's a solid body. It's fully solid, which is okay if, if you need that. But if we want to make a shell and want to shell it out, here's how you can do that. Scroll down at the bottom here. Actually, I'm not quite done yet. I want to create uh, a nice, uh, like our original design here that we were showing off. I want to create that, that circle bottom here. So that's a nice circle that kind of blends into those two uh, shapes here, those two twisty shapes. So to do that is uh, I'll grab my offset uh, offset plane, click on that bottom, and then just offset it by a certain amount, let's say 10, hit OK. Now I can draw on that, create a circle, give it a radius. I could also make that parametric if I want to create a new user parameter, but I'm just going to make it 24, is it 34? I think it's 34. Hit OK, it encompasses that whole thing there. Hit OK, and I can extrude this guy with my extrude key and then uh, the, uh, the extent, let's change that to object and then just select the bottom there. We'll leave the operation to join and just hit okay. Okay, now I want to create an extrude from this top here that will kind of blend into these two here. So I'll bring back my sketch, I'll grab that profile, hit E for extrude, and then the start, I want it to be from an object, which is gonna be the top of this guy here. And then I'll use my arrow here to kind of bring this up. Now it's cutting it, so let's change the operation from cut to join. And then what I can do is I can play with this tapered angle and bring it in up to what, 30? 
or so, and that's blending it in nicely. So now I got this circle that comes up and then starts to blend into those two. And that is how I created that shape there. And you have full control over how, how much of a blend you want or how tall you want your, uh, your bottom here to be your bottom base. But that is ready now for our shell. We have this really nice piece here that we can apply a coil to an internal uh, threading if we want, which is what I did. So let's go ahead and bring up our shell tool. Click the bottom. Now here's what's important. For the direction, you need to make it set to outside. Normally I have it on the inside, but I really want it on the outside. So now I can add my shell here, which was 1.5, and you can see it is applying it there nicely. So hit OK. And then um, our, either our, is this where our visual thing? Nope, our visual thing just takes a little bit, the edges, right? So now we have our edges, you can clearly see it. So that looks super clean. If I bring back our section analysis, you can see, yep, that looks really clean. And uh, even the tip there is super nice. It's going to print so good because uh, there's no overhang. This is excellent. So now um, at this point, you can create the, uh, the second piece for creating our coil here. Now, just a, a note, if you are creating some threading here, there is a thread tool. I found it to kind of break a little bit. If I put uh, modeled here, it tends to kind of close that off there. Um, so just be aware. You might want to create a new body that has that same shape, the cylinder with the same radius and then kind of join it or merge it, combine it into the bottom here. Cause for whatever reason, it's kind of messing with our geometry. Let me hit uh, okay and see what that does. I didn't do it this way. Yeah, I see it kind of, kind of ruins it. The, the threading there kind of goes up here. It doesn't, you might want to do partial threading, but even then um, where you say uh, full length and you don't want it to be the full length, even then it kind of messes with it. So uh, what I did was I like to use the, um, I like to use a real coil and create my own because uh, it just doesn't work so well. So that's just one note there. Um, but let's look at our original design and just take a look at the threading there. How did I do the threading? It's right here. Um, it's, uh, it has some gap tolerances. It has a revolution of one and a half. Actually, I think I changed this to two. Yeah, I've changed it since. Um, and I have uh, outside and it's an internal triangular thing on the on the uh, actual holder for the NeoPixel ring. But I will share this file uh, as a download. So look in the description if you do want to download the specific one. Uh, I won't be doing a learned guide on this because I've done this quite a few times. Um, but this one is just a, a more of like, hey, I, I figured out a really good method in Fusion 360 and how to make it. It's parametric and that is really, really nice. So. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Let me know what you think. If you uh, have any cool ideas for this, I hope it's useful. Uh, if you have any cool ideas and tips, let me know in the description, in the comment section. It'll help me out and other folks too. That's going to be it for me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. You've been watching Lair Belair. My name is Noah Roez, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, remember to, well, make a great day. Bye, folks.